So we're going to look at the maxillary molars and first we're going to start with the age of eruption. So the maxillary first molars, and this is the same for the mandibular first molars, they're your six year molars. So they're going to erupt around six to seven years old. Now your maxillary second molars, on the other hand, they're going to come out a little bit later. It's approximately 12 years old. And now if we were to compare the mandibular second molars, it's about the same. Um, mandibular second molars are going to come out around 11 to 13 years old. So now let's look at the cusp. So there's, I would say four and a half cusp. The reason I say four and a half is there's the cusp of Carabelli, which is considered a fifth cusp. But in essence, it's, it's this small sort of cusp that's non-functional. And in this drawing right here, it's a little faint, but it's this cusp right here. So we have this large mesial lingual cusp. And then attached to it is the cusp of Car Carabelli, the fifth cusp. Now, if we look at the size of the cusps, you probably guess that the mesial lingual is the largest cusp. Then from there, we go to the mesial buccal and then next we're going to look at the distal buccal and then the distal lingual and I know in this drawing it seems the other way around just keep in mind that the drawing is is not to scale it, it's trying I'm trying my best for the scale and then the fifth and the last cusp is the cusp of Carabelli in terms of size so I'm going to write this again ML is greater than MB which is greater than db, which is greater than dl, which is greater than, we'll just call it cusp of now let's look at the grooves that are present so this one's gonna have the central groove which much like before it's gonna go down the center of the tooth and then from there, we're going to have the buccal groove. And the buccal, of course, is going to go towards the facial surface, which is right here. Next, we're going to have the distal buccal, which is this one right here. And we have the distal oblique, which is actually right here. And then we have the cusp for the fifth cusp, or the cusp of Carabelli. Now what's interesting about both the maxillary first and second tooth is we have two transverse grooves, or sorry, transverse ridges. And these transverse ridges kind of form a triangle. And it's seen in the fourth cusp version of the maxillary second, but not in the three cusp version. So let me quickly hit that. The maxillary second has two options. You can have a four cusp version or a three cusp version. If we have the three cusp version, there is no distal lingual. So the distal lingual is usually right here, right? So it's missing in this one. So that's another one of those key points to keep in mind that when you have the three cusp, there is no distal lingual cusp. Another thing, if we look at the, sh the occlusal table, it sort of looks like a heart. So that's another thing that's usually if you see it on the test, that's what comes up. And then if we're looking at the occlusal table for the fourth, the four cusp, it sort of looks like a parallelogram. And if I drew this a little better, we would see it. The same thing is seen in the maxillary first molar. It has this parallelogram shape in terms of the occlusal outline, or sorry, occlusal table. Now the cusp of Carabelli is only seen in about two-thirds of the population, so you're going to see it on your tooth, uh, but in terms of restoration, Usually the cusp of Carabelli is in place in a restoration just because it's a non-functional cusp.
And if we're looking at the acute angles of this parallelogram, just remember that the mesial buccal and the distal lingual are our acute angles. Um, that's something important because if you remember that the mesial lingual cusp in the maxillary first is the biggest cusp, so you'd expect this to be an obtuse angle. In terms of the height of contour, um, from the facial aspect, if we were to look at it, there's going to be a more prominent mesial half. So if we look at this tooth, we know that the mesial half is much more prominent than the distal half, and that's going to be something significant. So there's going to be kind of a bulge right here. And that's also going back to the size of our cusp. We know that it's mesial lingual going to mesial buccal, so our mesial buccal is going to create that prominent mesial height of contour on the, uh, on the facial. And another big thing to remember about the maxillary first is this has, the maxillary first has the largest occlusal outline of all maxillary teeth. And that's usually something that's going to pop up on an exam because it's a unique feature of the maxillary first teeth. Next, if we're going to look at the, the cusp, the distal lingual cusp, which is this one right here, is slightly smaller than the mesial lingual cusp in terms of their, their cusp height. So if we're looking at this, so we've got the distal side. So the distal side in this, we see that there is a slight difference in, in terms of the lingual cusp. So just keep in mind that the distal lingual cusp versus the mesial lingual cusp has a slight difference in height. And then, of course, I said that the oblique ridge is basically going to go from, it's a diagonal from the mesial lingual going to the distal buccal cusp. So this right here is something that we see. It's an oblique ridge. And if you were to actually look at a real tooth, you, you see this kind of line or this diagonal that goes across the tooth. And that's considered, that's named the oblique ridge. So it's something, it's a key feature to know about. In terms of the crown taper, if we were to compare the right to the, uh, sorry, the distal to the mesial, there's actually a, a taper from the distal. So in this drawing, if I were to alter it a little bit, I would, I would alter it just like this. So we see that there is a distal taper, and this is going to make the buccal lingual seem a little bit smaller, on the, or more narrow on the distal side than the mesial side. And this kind of goes back to that parallelogram shape that it has. What's common in the maxillary molars is we're going to have wider facial lingual than mesial distal. So that's a very common thing. In terms of the marginal ridges, in both of these drawings, it's, it's apparent that the distal marginal ridge on both of these teeth is more cervical than the mesial marginal ridge. It's also that the distal marginal ridge is concave. In terms of the height of contours, if we look at the buccal versus the um, lingual, it's going to be the exact same on the maxillary first and second. The buccal height of contour is going to be at the cervical third, and the lingual height of contour is going to be in the middle third. And this is the exact same thing that you're going to see in the maxillary seconds. The, buckles, the buccal height of contour will be in the cervical third, while the lingual height of contour is going to be in the middle third. In terms of the root depression, a key thing that's seen in the maxillary teeth is that they have three roots. So we have three roots that are seen now, if you notice a big difference already, the spread. The maxillary first is going to have a greater spread than the uh, maxillary second teeth. Also, if we're looking at 
these two um, roots right here on the buckle, we have a distal buckle and a mesial buckle. And so the mesial buckle and distal buckle, if you almost look at it, the shape that it forms looks very similar to plier handles. And typically on an exam you're going to see that they'll write that it's, this looks like plier handles. In terms of size, you probably guess that the lingual is the biggest root. Then it goes to the mesial buckle and the distal buckle. And a way to remember this is if we think back to the cusp size, the mesial buckle cusp is bigger. Therefore, the mesial buckle root should be bigger. And the same thing goes for the distal buckle. Also, I should have mentioned this, that the mesial lingual, the way I remember that for the maxillary, it's the biggest. Maxillary has an L and mesial lingual has an L. So it's easy to remember that mesial lingual is the largest in the maxillary molars. Now in terms of the root trunk, one thing, this is usually dimensions that come up on the test, so if we look at the facial, we're going to see that the facial root trunk is about four millimeters. Then if we look at the distal, it's about five millimeters. Now unfortunately I didn't draw the mesial, so we're going to actually use this side right here. And so the mesial is about three millimeters. And this is something that's usually coming on a test. So just remember it goes three, four, and five. So that's mesial three, facial four, and distal five. Now in terms of the canals, the mesial buckle, being that it's the second largest, almost always has two canals. And this is important when you're doing a root canal therapy. You want to make sure that you clean out the, the pulp that's going to be found in both of these canals. So be sure to look for that. And then the palatal root is going to have the largest canal space. So that's about it for the maxillary molars. Um, in the captions, I provided this picture as well as my notes and um, a table that will help you out in terms of finding out the key points of what you need to know for these teeth. Also, um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, uh, place it in the caption below or the comment section below and if you like please subscribe